Education and onboarding into Web3 and crypto is a very important part of ensuring newcomers understand the space, the risks, and how to find their place in the ever-expanding world of blockchain. My guest today, Arndt, is a co-founder of what he calls the dual lingo of Web3 and crypto, which is called Crypto Hunt. Crypto Hunt is an online platform that offers those interested in the world of blockchain and beyond free courses to explore and learn all about Web3 and crypto. Arndt is also a fellow podcaster with a show called Crypto in Plain English, which, as its title might lead you to believe, is all about talking about crypto in an easily digestible format. His podcast, like more than blockchain's quick pods, aim at tackling complex ideas in short amounts of time via thoughtfully planned out audio content. So to keep in line with keeping things short, let's get going. I'm Jarrett Carpenter, and this is More Than Blockchain. Arndt, how are you doing? Welcome to More Than Blockchain. Thank you. I'm very good. Thank you for letting us be here. Absolutely. And you are a rare guest on More Than Blockchain because I've actually met you in IRL. And I've met you before you've come on the pod. Normally, it's the other way around. So are you currently calling in from San Francisco where I met you? That's right. I'm just on the opposite side of that wall in a okay. phone booth. Nice. At the Cello Foundation space, right? That's correct. Yes. Okay, perfect. Well, you're here because tonight we're going to talk about the company you have started. I think you have a co-founder as well, so we should probably give them a shout out. And the company name is Crypto Hunt. So why don't you go ahead, talk a little bit about maybe your experience is also getting into crypto and probably how that influenced the creation of Crypto Hunt. Yes. So Crypto Hunt is the friendliest place to get started with crypto and Web3. And that's really important because if you have ever tried to get into Web3, it's a pretty hostile environment. You have to connect your wallet and go through all these, you know, jump through all these hoops. And there's a lot of scams out there. And the reason we started this is because it was complicated many, many years ago, right? I lost a lot of money because I lost the key to my wallet for Dogecoin, which I bought because I love dogs, not because I'm a genius investor. Same, my uh, co-founder Christian, he wanted to buy Bitcoin in 2013 and never did it because he couldn't figure out the stupid wallet thing, right? And now we're at a point where crypto and Web3 can do really good things for us humans. And so we think it's about time to teach people how to get into it and really turn you know, the power they have over the internet into a force of good. So I I really want to talk to you about FTX because we're currently living in a crazy moment in crypto history. But maybe before we do that, that's like how and why Crypto Hunt. But in as many words, what is Crypto Hunt? For people that don't know about it, what does it look like? Because I've been on the website and I find it to be absolutely fascinating. And I'm going to totally be incorporating it into a lot of things that I'm doing for more than blockchain, also for Mercy Core. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah, awesome. So what it does at the heart of it, it's kind of like a Duolingo, but for crypto. So we have lessons on the page that are easy to take and you can just go through them and there's a little quiz in the end. It's all very joyful and it's meant for beginners to kind of learn crypto as if it were a new language. So you learn one concept at a time, one word at a time and sort of build your knowledge at your own pace. And that's essentially crypto hunt and eventually we will make it easier for you to discover interesting projects as well. That's sort of like on the roadmap. Oh, actually, can we dive into that right now? I know that I wanted to go right into FTX, but can you actually tell me more about that? And let me give you some context for the question. Yeah. In 2023, I'm launching a show that will be under the more than blockchain umbrella, but it's going to be called Lunch Money Gems. Mm -hmm. And even though I'm a Bitcoin maxi, I do think there's crazy arbitrage opportunities out there with some of the altcoins, or as some people may call them shit coins, pardon my Spanish. And some of these will go, you know, just like your Dogecoin, right? When you bought that, they'll go 100x in 12 months, especially when we get back into the bull market. Are you going to be highlighting maybe some of the lunch money gems that I will be that are on the far end of the spectrum? Or are you going to be looking at maybe some of the ones that aren't in the top 50? What does that look like? So that's what we actually already do. There are project pages out there where you can look at the top. I think we have 150, 200 or so uh, coins and we have a human readable take. So like you can actually understand what they are and what they're about. And we have our own opinion uh, section on them. So you can kind of get, you know, a flavor of an opinion of someone on that. And we are very critical about some of those. 
And uh, I will fight you tooth and nail on Bitcoin, by the way. But uh, yeah, so that's already there. But I think the big opportunity really is that Web3 is more than just coins you can invest in for quick profit. Right? Web3 is about giving the power of the internet back to the users. And by being able to program the flow of money, you can actually do good. And it's like a really cool thing, right? So the first time in a very long time, we as the populace have like the power to do that, right? And so I think that's what we really want people to take home. And so we're going to expand much more into Web3 instead of just being focused on coins, which we are right now. I love that. And yeah, when I say I'm a maxi, I get a holy host of responses. <laughs> and the thing is, I'm more of a spiritual maxi because if you look at my portfolio, it is not aligned with Bitcoin being the only thing. I have a very, it's like less than 3%, which people always giggle at. And I remember when I shared that with you in San Francisco, you said the same thing. So off mic or maybe on a whole nother show, we'll get into the, you know, I'll have a maxi come on and we can really get, get down in the dirt. But I do want to jump in right away into FTX because one of the things I remember when you were showing me in San Francisco was you outlined stable coins, which we know are pegged to the US dollar traditionally. Maybe we'll, I, I don't think any are pegged to the euro, but they're normally pegged to the dollar as the global reserve currency. But then, and this was something really interesting that Crypto Hunt does, and I think is actually quite great. The more I thought about it, I pushed back a little bit or originally when I saw, but you call everything else volatile coins. Mm -hmm. And did you and your co-founder, I think Christian, you said? Yeah, that's right. So I have a co-founder, uh, his name is Christian Beiser. Um, and we are both, I would say, we call ourselves the Switzerland of crypto. So we'll call it what it is. And uh, yes, yeah, so stable coins, um, I think it helps to understand why they were created. So stable coins were created because using something like Bitcoin did not turn out to be a currency replacement. It turned out to be a volatile currency. So if you want to go buy a loaf of bread and it costs you $3 in Bitcoin equivalent today and tomorrow it's five, then it's not very useful. And so people started pegging these coins and called them stable coins. But yeah, so of course, stable coins is a misnomer. We can talk about that because a lot of risk in stable coins. Um, but we really felt like, you know, what is it if it's not stable? It's certainly volatile. And so we invented the word. I hope it sticks. It kind of makes sense to us. Yeah, because I was going to say, you know, the, the thing and I was thinking about, I was like, no, 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 this is way better that you call it volatile coins. Even if I felt like, oh, man, come on, don't call Bitcoin or Ethereum or any of the ones, the projects that I find dear and that I'm invested in. But the reality of it is on days like today, oh, yeah. I assume you guys planned ahead and said, no, 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 we need everyone up front to know that these coins are volatile. Their prices will go up and their prices will go down. I had recently tweeted that I think Bitcoin's bottom will be eight to 12,000, somewhere between February and May of 2023. I got a lot of flack from that <laughs> on the internet as one does. And then we see it go down and it touches 15,800 today. So it went from 20 to like 15,800, you know, in less than a week or something like that. So it is very volatile. So when you and Christian were thinking about the words and the vocab, was that something where you trying to bake in the idea that the, the, the built in risk without maybe saying it? For sure, because people come into this and in good times, they see everyone making money or everybody at least pretends to have made money. You know, your neighbor suddenly driving a Lambo. So what could go wrong? So you got to call the things for what they are. And this is the most volatile investment you can make as crypto. And so why not call it volatile? That's where the intention came from. Yeah, I thought that was great. And I thought about it more. I was like, no, 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 this is way better. And it's I actually am going to start to use that as I also, I think, leverage Crypto Hunt, which is so great. So thank you for creating this awesome platform to onboard people. Because sure. people come to me all the time and they say, hey, I want to learn more. And I'll send them. And there's a bunch of stuff on more than blockchain, the website, but I really think what Crypto Hunt has done is, is excellent. And so I think I asked you this, but refresh my memory. How many languages is it, is it in? I believe it's in English. And you know, how many languages also other than English is it in? And what's the roadmap to make it in as many languages as possible? So it is in English only right now. We have it built so we can easily spin up different languages from the technology standpoint, because we knew that was going to happen eventually. And we're seeing that there's a very strong interest in Latin America, Sub-Saharan Africa, where people use crypto day to day because their currency is, uh, their, their native currency has high inflation, or they're not even able to get bank accounts, right? People don't realize there's a massive amount of people who are underbanked, as, as they're called. And so we've naturally seen a lot of interest from there. And so we will branch into new languages. I think the first one will probably be Spanish. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, especially. I was actually talking today 
with the regional director for the Americas of Mercy Corps. Yeah. And in Latin America, the challenges that you are speaking of is one of them is the currencies are dying. So their value to essentially the dollar, which most of them are pegged at, is dying. And the other challenge, which is really the opportunity, is how do we deal with cross-border payments? And so within Crypto Hunt, do you guys have your own separate like world use cases? This is how people are using them. How is it, you know, how is it broken down for someone who is a Venezuelan immigrant that now lives in Colombia and they're trying to wrap their head around Web3? They see Crypto Hunt is now in Spanish. How does the platform work for them if they get in there? Yeah, so once that happens, the main objective is to pick people up from where they are and kind of provide context to what they've already been hearing, right? So people may have been hearing, oh, Bitcoin, but they don't know what it is. So people have been hearing blockchain, but it doesn't mean anything to them unless you explain it. And I would argue that many people of the 33 million people who have crypto in their accounts in the United States don't even know why they bought it. They just bought it because it went up, right? So now is really the time to dig in and learn and understand what is a blockchain, like what's good about it and what is bad about it, things like that. So we have those fundamentals. And then we dive deeper into the specific coins and blockchains and tokens. If you want to get familiar, we'll help you set up wallets, that kind of stuff. You brought up, and we talked about this, I think, too, when I met, and it was just like this idea of buzzwords. Sure. (laughs) Now that you are doing this 25 hours a day, right? What for you is the most misunderstood buzzword that the most people use day to day. And you can include me in this, throw me in there. (laughs) Anyone that you talk to in Web3 or crypto. There's just a ton, right? But the first thing that you always explain is like, what is a blockchain? What's the block and what's the chain? And then you kind of explain why that was invented in the first place, which is really interesting. We can get into that. And, And so if you have these basic concepts, you suddenly unlock sort of, you know, you remember Minesweeper where you click one and like it unlocks. <laughs> so that's how you unlock your topics. Um, stable coins is one we're very passionate about because as I said, as a misnomer, stable coins are not stable. And unless you really understand the very technical details, which, you know, not everybody will, they should be aware that holding stable coins is probably a bad idea. And so I would put that into that bucket. When you and Christian are thinking about where crypto hunt is going to go. And I love that you're saying it's way more than just basically we're going to buy digital money as an investment vehicle or something like that. Yeah. What's like the, you know, in five years, what's crypto hunt going to be doing or what's the thing that's actually scary when you guys think about, or you're not even sure how you're going to get there. You know, you're like, we're going to build up till we get to the cliff. And then somehow by then we'll have enough wherewithal to have the rocket to go over or to have the power to make the bridge. Where's the point? And, and I asked this because recently I was on a call. I was on a call today with uh, Grant, who's on Not Crypto Bros. And we were talking about looking ahead to like what tokenization and token gated communities is going to look like. And we just got ahead of ourselves. We're like, wow, we, we, there's a lot of things between our idea and where we are. Not just like we have probably the, the people in our toolkit or like, you know, in our network to probably figure this out. But I feel like in crypto, you can get over your skis really quick. So what's something that you guys are maybe thinking about, but you're not necessarily sure how you're going to get there with Crypto Hunt? The most exciting thing is really when uh, the mechanisms of Web3, so like the idea of giving users ownership in the projects they participate in or giving users a vote in those, or even being able to write your own financial systems, right, to do the things that you want and not the things that the banks and corporations want when that actually goes mainstream. And so we're still far away from that, but I think we're seeing the beginning. And and that's really exciting because I don't know how that's going to look like. It kind of feels like the the days of the internet. You know, we don't quite have Netscape yet, so there's no browser, but people are starting to dial into things. They're all getting excited. They just don't know why. That's where we are right now. And that's why we created Krypton in the first place, because we want to make that space discoverable. Kind of like think of it as Yahoo directories, the very old people will remember. That's who we want to be for Web3 to begin with. And then ultimately, obviously, much more. But we think that without discovery, that, that, that can happen. So in a way, we're helping hopefully to facilitate that movement. But it will be very interesting, I think. I was looking over the website, and I'm excited to give you a chance at the end to shout out everything you're doing, because I also know you guys have a podcast, which is cool. We're, mm-hmm. we're going to touch upon that. And I was looking over the website. And I saw that there's a leaderboard for referrals and I am going to hopefully get on that leaderboard (laughs) soon as I share this out with literally everyone in the world. What does that like, what are you trying to create with the leaderboard there 
And what does the community, as you're talking about, really create a space where people can kind of come and learn? It's kind of like an online academy of friends that are just curious and learning. What's the social kind of construct going to be within for all of the Crypto Hunt members? Learning is kind of lonely today in many aspects of learning. And Crypto Hunt is included in that because you sort of go on your own path. But we do really want to turn this into a like a community of people who can learn together, learning groups, um, maybe even just, you know, groups that come together to discuss these topics and form their own opinions and thesis around what's happening in the world. And so we've obviously started building this community. So if you think about a classic approach to Web3 is people say, connect your wallet. And then because the technology is limiting, they can't reach back out to you. So we said, no, no, you know, we're Web2 people that want to open up Web3 to new people. Let's just connect with your email address. So we send you an email every week with new content, right? And the leaderboard that you mentioned is part of that where we are trying to build incentives into this platform for people to really get engaged and kind of intersect with each other. It's going to take time for us to get there, but that's one of those first things where you can really see other people also getting involved. Yeah, that that makes sense. I think that is one of the things in Web3 that's really exciting as you start to connect wallets, especially to stuff. And this is kind of a conversation Grant and I were having earlier, but it's like, we've never really had this before where you can not only buy Nike, but then also be in like a different community within the Nike. If we're just using Nike as an example within the Nike ecosystem and talking about Nike, now we're talking about, you know, athletic wear or a brand. What kind of companies are coming to Crypto Hunt and saying, hey, we want your help to onboard people? Is it car companies like Tesla? Is it brands like Nike? Is it universities saying, hey, how do we steal this for a Crypto 101 course and then give people credit? Yeah, so on the company side, there's generally two types of relationships that we like to build. One is the ones that are actually building good products in the space, but they either have a hard time explaining what they're doing, which is very common in our industry. And so they come to us for onboarding and education, or it is companies that have a hard time explaining to their employees what Web3 is. And you can imagine there's like, Loads of teams running into all different directions right now at Google and Facebook and LinkedIn to try to figure out this Web3 thing. And their VP says like, you know, we got to go Web3, but nobody really knows what it is. And so we're actually getting inquiries. Hey, can we use this for corporate learning? And I think that's quite exciting because with the power of those corporations behind Web3, uh, I think we can really accelerate this movement. And so, okay, Facebook or Meta, they just laid off 11,000 people today. I think 13% of their workforce. This is fairly... By the time people hear this episode, this will be ancient news. And who knows, maybe Facebook will have hired 20,000 more new employees because that's how fast the world's moving. What are the incentives for corporations to work with Crypto Hunt? First of all, we have an, we have an audience. So that's for the ones that want to do onboarding and education. And they can showcase their products and they can showcase what they're building. And oftentimes that could be something that's really awesome for the planet. I just mentioned one project that I really like, which is uh, in housed in the same space here called Spirals. They have this idea that if you, instead of giving your money to the bank and have the bank put the money into guns and oil and gas or wherever the most money comes from, you just put that money into crypto and the interest you get on that crypto savings account goes to the planet by doing carbon offsetting, right? Really cool idea. And so we feature them and uh, we showcase and we have a little lesson on them and that gives them exposure to our audience. So that's, that's one motivation for sure. The other one is just education. When people don't actually know what it is, they come to us and they figure it out kind of the Duolingo. I have coached soccer in the past and most people have taught something. If you're a parent, then you're a lifelong <laughs> professor at this point. And I feel like whenever you start to teach something, you realize where your own flaws are in the understanding. And then you also become actually a better practitioner. So in the journey of Crypto Hunt, what's something that you've actually flipped your opinion on or become better at understanding when it comes to crypto or Web3? I think the fundamental insight is, first of all, just, just to be clear, both Christian and I, and neither one of the employees on our team is actually a crypto expert. We started because we were interested in personal finance or how to you know, empower ourselves to build different products, a more intrinsic motivation. And we had to learn along the way. And that's probably what helps us teach because every time I write an episode for a podcast, I have to research the heck out of that too. 
to understand it and make it you know understandable for our audience. So there's that. But I think the biggest insight we've come to is that crypto's first wave was obviously the financial motivation to get a few scraps here and there or maybe strike it big without doing the work. That was the motivation for most people. And if it worked for some, I think that's awesome. But I think what we've learned is that people come to this topic now because it's in the media. They want to understand what is an NFT? Like, why do artists benefit from that? Right? There's a lot of story behind crypto and blockchains that now has to be explained. And uh, that was really kind of like the big insight here for me. Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. I tell people all the time, if someone says they're an expert in crypto, don't listen to them. <laughs> I consider myself a forever student. And I have quick pods on this podcast and whenever i do them i have to do a lot of research as well because i'm more i'm you know i know more or less but when you have to actually put something out there whether it's a medium article or you're going to actually put a podcast out to the universe you want to make sure that everything is lined up so that that makes sense So talking about podcasts i'd love to give you the chance now to talk to people about where they can go learn more obviously they can go to the website please shout that out shout out socials um, shout out the podcast and also shout out where people can get in touch with you you and i obviously met in person we exchanged LinkedIn's. If people want to reach out to you and say, hey, Arn, I'm really excited to bring this onto the company that I work at. How do I do that? Is there any way I need to do that? If they have questions, where should they, uh, where should they go? First of all, cryptohunt.it. That's where we are and that's where the product is. And um, I hope a lot of people take the lessons and enjoy them and do send us feedback. So if you want to get in touch with us, it's just founders at cryptohunt.it. It's our direct email. We answer every email. So don't be shy. And um, yeah, so that, that's essentially the best way to get in touch. Another way to learn is we have this podcast, you and I, we talked about it. It's called Crypto in Plain English. And what we're trying to do is we're going to take one concept every single work day of the week uh, and explain that in very easy terms in, you know, it started with a minute. It could be two minutes now sometimes, but it's really, really quick. It's actually so quick that some people call me and say, hey, I listened to this on my three-hour train ride and I can't listen to your damn intro anymore. Like, can you package them up? But that's a good one because that gives you a really good understanding if you want to dive on a single topic and you don't know anything about it or you just want to go from episode one all the way down. Gets you caught up pretty quickly. Okay, great. So Crypto in Plain English, yep. CryptoHunt.it and then Founders at CryptoHunt.it. Is that right? That's right. Well, this is going to be a shorter episode than normal with the interviews, but I like quick pods. You guys have three-minute podcasts that are long. So, Arndt, thank you so much for joining. Of course. For me, this is the longest podcast I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having us. Thanks for listening to this episode. And be sure to check out this episode's show notes so you can get to all the links that aren't mentioned. As always, be sure to follow us on social media at More Than Blockchain. And if you're interested to learn more about blockchain, go ahead and visit morethanblockchain.xyz. That is our website. And if you scroll to the bottom under our newly added learn section, you'll see that there's a link there that will take you to Crypto Hunt to go ahead and start their free crypto and Web3 courses. No matter where you're listening to the pod, please be sure to subscribe and share this episode with someone who may want to learn about the latest in Web3 and crypto through Crypto Hunt. Thanks again for checking out More Than Blockchain, and I'll see you next time.